front door. Yeah. And I'm a seven Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yes. <laughs> hey, oh yay. Anyway. She slipped in during prayer time. Yeah, I, I saw, just saw her. Yeah. She slipped in. See, we prayed and some people appeared. Wow. <laughs> See, God answers prayer. <laughs> there we go. People just appear out of nowhere. That's going to happen. The rapture, that's a great segue because we're talking about that today. But the power of prayer is real. That's right. Absolutely. So, let's turn to Revelation 4, 1 through 3. And uh, we're in a different... We're, we're out of the churches, if you didn't catch that. And some people... Yay! But uh, others are, you know, because now you almost, this is the start of maybe what you came to Revelation 4. Mm -hmm. And you're in Revelation 4. <laughs> That's just to be honest. <laughs> but the, uh, you came to Revelation 4 to, to see some of this end time stuff. And we're, we'll start talking about it. And we'll always, as known, 404 verses, 800 back into the Old Testament and things like that. So um, what we'll do to get through some things, we'll not have you. Um, uh, We'll talk about some things. We'll read this passage, but then we'll kind of go over some things for for some ground rules of the differences that we'll talk about. We use scripture all the time, but we'll go in and share what it is and what it isn't and things like that. So we'll kind of get that comparison. So without further ado, but we need to read scripture because that's a necessity Amen. in all of our lives. What is uh, Revelation 4, 1 through 3, 7? After this, I love... And there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit. And there before me was a throne to heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald encircling the throne. Thank you. All right. So in verse 1 it says, After these things, after what things? Would that be the rapture or not? No, not yet. I mean, this the, the entire the theme of the passage, you're right about that, is the rapture. So that, that for clarity there. But in context of, the, of this verse here, they're saying, we just got out of the churches, so after these things would be what? The churches, right? So, we're so after the churches. The churches. So we're then that logic is, I have, I'm done here with the churches, now I'm going to move forward. Because if we remember the outline, we or, or God's nature Himself, remember He was and is and is, is to, to come. come. Okay, mm -hmm. so the idea is that what was was kind of like that correlation with what John when John saw Jesus. That was what was. Obviously, they walked together, they talked together, and then he saw him in Revelation chapter one. So that's what was, right? Kind of remembering that. What is was the churches. Okay, and the churches we went over all seven of them, obviously. And um, what happens in that is that that's what is. So what's left over? What is to, what come. Is to come? So after these things, and what they're talking after these things is, okay, this time has stopped. And they some uh, in timeline, they sometimes call it the time of the Gentiles, you know. And then you go into these things that are to come. So it's almost a transitionary phrase saying, hey, okay, we're done with today. This is coming tomorrow, when it's truth and all that that goes with it. So, but it's kind of Mick taken, he, he can almost, you ever see people that don't have transitional words and they start talking about another story, yeah. right after they talk about this story, you yeah, ever talk yeah, to people no. like, yeah, that, and you're like, wait a minute, what, what happened to my story? You know, Just go so, around in a circle. Yeah, in a circle, but this is not a circle, God is very organized, so yes. what we want to clarify is that God says, okay, we're done here, we're moving on to the future, okay? One thing we want to go with also that, to that point, um, God is very organized. And God is very methodical. We talked about, does anybody remember what we, I think we talked about here, I'm sure we did, uh, prophecy to God in the, in, in the Jewish mind particularly is what? Does anybody remember? It's pattern. Okay. Prophecy is pattern in the Jewish mind. So what that means is, is that prophecy is not just uh, make something, uh, predict something, it's fulfilled. God is continuously doing that same prediction and fulfillment in the same theme. And if you look in your own life and, and look back and, and, and if you think about it, God probably has been working in a very similar way in your life in different circumstances, I get it, but in the same way, kind of like, you know, the same way before. So that's what we mean. It's like, it, it's almost a, um, a trust that is built to say, hey, I'm going to work in you. And it's not going to be a, 
it might be a surprise, you know, it could show up at any time, that's just God, but the idea is that it's going to be a pattern that you know. So it's not going to be, he's not going to do something, remember he, he talks about temptation, he says he won't tempt you beyond what you were able and things of that nature. The same kind of deal, he's, he's going to not do something that's outside of maybe what your realm of what you can understand. Now, don't get me wrong, he's going to wow you, he's going to do great things, no doubt. But the idea is if you look back at the pattern of that, it'll probably be something how he did another great thing for you before. So it, 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 just even the, the looking at that is blessing his name. So I would encourage you to look back at your life, think on things, and see how he worked. And I'm, if you write it down or however you, what makes you kind of really think about it, I bet you'll find it's very similar. So that's so we want to go and look at the organization of God. Prophecy is pattern. Okay, I'm sure I should write that down. <laughs> Prophecy equals pattern. All right, so remember that. All right, now, um, he, he heard a voice in verse 1. What does that voice uh, sound like? A trumpet. A trumpet. Trumpet's pretty quiet, huh? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting one. <laughs> yeah, your neighbors will bless you for that. Yeah. You oh, yeah, they will. So. <laughs> they had their own version of noise. I got mine. <laughs> yeah, the cataracted. Um, so, it, you know, so it's pretty loud. And then, but I mean, before we even go, if you recall, um, the, the trumpet is, is coming out of what? It sounds like it's, uh, the trumpet, is, the voice is coming from what? I mean, it's kind of going back before we're saying how the voice was in the trumpet, but uh, where is John hearing this trumpet from? There's an open door. There's an open yeah, door. door. Mm -hmm. And where's this, where does it is imply? Yeah, where's the door at? Heaven. 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 Okay, so it, there's a door to heaven, so we're kind of looking from earth to heaven, as it were, right? And we're mm -hmm. seeing this trumpet coming down, or this voice like a trumpet. So this is a loud voice. Um, do you guys remember that in the churches they had... Um, uh, they talked about God could open a door that no one could shut, and then the, they closed the door no one can open. Mm -hmm. It's one of the last few churches we read. This is a door that only he can open. Okay, mm -hmm. So we want to clarify that. So this is a door to heaven. And it makes sense, right? Because only God could open the door yeah. to heaven. <laughs> like, yeah, you couldn't. Can you open, anybody else open a door to heaven? No. I'd probably call it like a portal or, or something <laughs> else, but, uh, but uh, it would be the door to heaven. Mm -hmm. Only God can open. Okay. Now, what's neat too, it's not just a trumpet, it's a loud voice, but what it says something. What does it say? Come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. Ah, just what we were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. what, now we had after these things and take place after this. And this is again the churches. So God is, is sequencing something in the outline. Was, is, and is to come. Okay. Um, here's a lie of the devil that we is that God has withheld something from you. Okay, God has not withheld anything from you. He's freely given you all things, Scripture says, okay? So if Satan says, oh, God is holding back on you, that is Satan speaking, okay? God has freely given us all things. He didn't even restrict his son to pay for us, right? That was right. the lie of the Garden of Eden. Yeah, exactly. He said, you, you'll not die. God said, oh, you know, and things of that nature. And even Eve put her own little spin as humans. She said, oh, I'm not supposed to touch it. God never said that. But she put her little spin on it and said, I'm not even to touch it. So he didn't give her, put some extra rules on herself. So, But the idea is that that's the devil's lie. God has withheld something from you because he's, I don't know, mean or nasty, whatever adjective or whatever you want to put into this. So God has not withheld anything. Because what does he say? Come up here and what, what, what would he do in verse 1? Show you. Show you. Yeah. So God wants to show you a lot. Uh, do you think God has a lot to show you? Amen. Yes. <laughs> I think there's more things with God to show you than anything. There's not nothing, you know. And heaven, like, right, who, who wouldn't want to see heaven? Anybody's like, yeah, I'll kind of, like, watch the show tonight. And <laughs> TV, I don't want to see heaven. Kind of like, I'm standing here looking at my kid. Hey, I'm looking at him. Uh -huh. and, then, you know, and, and then it's like, uh, you know, and because John, he look at his thing. He was on Patmos, right? So he... Think about it too, the situation. We kind of want to go to heaven. We don't want to stay in a prison, you know. So here he gets a, a way to go out so uh, of this too. So it's almost a relief. And, and God, I think, is doing that too and shows 
basically, like I was telling Roy, the, the theme is the rapture. So, and it, and it shows releasing John, say, from Patmos in prison is what we get. We, are, we get to be out of our um, zone here of hurt and, and, and just the earth itself. We get to go mm -hmm. up. Okay. So it's kind of the portion of the rapture. We get to not go into the tribulation. We get uh, it basically freed from the wrath here and, and the bonds of earth. So, Question ahead. or thought. Yeah. Not saying that we get an invitation to physically go to heaven every mm -hmm. day, but right. isn't the door open to heaven every time we go to God and commune with him in prayer? Mm hmm it certainly is, but he's not saying in some ways, I mean, he is saying that because you get to commune with him, mm -hmm. come up here. So the story is a little different. It is, but I'm you just know, saying when so. you're talking about being let out of mm -hmm. this earth, and I know that when I spend my time with the Lord in the morning, right. that for those period of time, until mm -hmm. I go to the prayer request, right. um, I'm not worried about anything else that's going on around me. That's right. I'm with the Lord. Anyway. That's one reason why you close your eyes. The, the rationale between closing your eyes and praying is so you block out the things of the world. The fun fact is, is that they didn't start that till maybe, I think, medieval times. So Jesus, when he was praying, he opened his eyes. Just saying. And how you would know somebody's praying is they would pray with their, their shawl. They put it on, mm -hmm. and that was an obvious. So if somebody had a head covering, not women, but men, right. then they were typically praying. So that's how you would know, kind of like eyes closing, somebody's eyes closing. Like that. So, but... But the thing is, I, I would reckon to put that Christ is coming to you. This is like we get to go where He is. Right. You know what I mean? Yes. So that, you yes, know, I do. In that way too. So, so th this is this really means the rapture. So here's the key where we know this is rapture. Obviously, He's calling us up. And some people say that when the rapture comes, He's going to call you by name. And that's wow. kind of a neat thought. It's a scripture that says it, but we kind of get from this passage. That he's going to call you by name individually. So everybody's going to call like Ronnie, Barry, but all one time, like with one voice. Or that name that go. only he and we know. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Very good yeah. point. Yes. Because he said he would get that. So that's right. And then he says, okay, I called you something. Here's a stone with it on it, right? <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> that's in another scripture. Yeah. The, yeah, the, it's no, not no. there. <laughs> it's in one of the churches that were the earlier ones. They said we have a white stone with the name only you and God. Right. Let's see if I marked so, it. No. A picture of a bowling ball. But anyway, uh, the idea is that he's going to call you up, and and but so one of verse two immediately. What does immediately mean? Right away. Right away. Yeah. Right away. Does that mean he's wasting time or no? He's, no. Not. <laughs> he's like, he needs to get two. you. He's ASAP. getting you. What's that? ASAP. 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 Somebody ASAP. says, immediately come here. You know, it's kind of, you know, that's what, you know, hmm. you know really it's cool. important. Yeah. Urgent. It's kind of saying urgent. Um, for clarity, too, John in this context is representing the church, being John is actually part of the, the church, meaning believers who were believing after Jesus resurrected. Okay? Mm -hmm. So John here is representing the church going to heaven. And that's how we get John. Because at this point, John is the only one who's getting a vision of heaven. But the, the application for us is that this is what's going to happen to us as the church. So John is getting that preview. And it's funny how people see end time stuff, if they're called, remember what, what's John's nickname from Jesus? What do you call him? Kind of disciple? Beloved. The beloved. <laughs> Daniel beloved. was a beloved too. Everybody who's kind of named beloved gets some end time stuff going on. So it seems like. <laughs> so it's interesting. But he also calls us beloved, too. So thus, don't we have an entire books and series on that? So we we're so he can't leave us out either, right? So he was so the other part, um, and immediate this immediately in the spirit was where we get our word rapture, right? Mm -hmm. Is rapture in the Bible? The actual word? I don't think so. No, it's not. No. no. It's not. It's, it's called the har tatso. okay? And what and that's the, the Hebrew word, I think. It might be a Greek word. I, I'm not sure, but that's, it's called the har -tatso. And what that means is that um, the, it's like a snatching away. So we're, we're, we're kind of have that urgency we just said, but it's we're going in and we're snatching somebody away. So imagine you're walking along and you're, there is a, uh, somebody starts catching on fire, the clothes on fire. You're like, oh, he'll be okay, or she'll be okay. You know, you, you, you're fine with that. 
<laughs> oh, you'll just stop, drop, and roll, right? You're, 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 you're standing there like, you done yet? You know, you're not like that, you know. So you, you get it out. No, you're going to grab them, snatch them away from the fire. I mean, you're going to help. You, I mean, you're, you're like in, we talk about adrenaline. We're going to adrenaline mode. Hey, you know, we got to do something here, you know. And this is the spirit behind the rapture of the Harpazo is snatching away. We're catching somebody before they're caught up in what's going to be, as we'll find out later, the tribulation period. Okay? So God is actually snatching us away as a, more so a, a child is being pulled out of the fire or, you know, so they don't get burned. And so the, this, the, the spirit of that is, too, that you're not going to get burned at all. Okay? So thus God is not going to let you be burned in, in this wrath that's to come. Now, the wrath itself is going to be a two-parter in this tribulation. It's going to be from God, because we have the seals, which we'll get into, and, and all the other things that we know. But also, it's going to be on the earth, too, because the earth is just going to go crazy, because we, we actually restrain the sin of the earth at this point with the spirit inside of us. Okay? So you have, as much as you um, go in and think, I'm insignificant maybe in the body of Christ. I'm not really doing much. I can't do much. You're holding back because the spirit is in you. A lot of sin Which is why the secular world does not like us so yes, much. Exactly. Exactly. Why so, you the secular world does not like us in the stances that we take. Yeah. And they fight so hard against us, and it's becoming more and more apparent. Yeah. Have you seen the, the news with the UK, UK, and yeah, UK? Mm -hmm. um, they have a church that is, I've uh, forgotten what kind of church it is, but anyhow, they have now decided. They're going to take the Bible and redo the pronouns. Oh my God. They're no, changing, no, no. Yes. Oh my They're God. changing go the pronouns because they said that when you call the Lord, <laughs> there is, Jesus was a man supposedly, but when you talk about God, you're not saying it's a he or she or. And they want all the pronouns. Oh, in the Methodist the Bible. Church has done a lot of that too. Uh, yeah, it was brought in, up in the, this morning, the more and liberal. I was like, I had to stop. You know, yeah. it was one of those. No, this is one of those come to Jesus moments where right. you know th this is not not good. But yeah, uh, yeah. God was running out of ideas. Yeah, he, yes, he, 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 I had yeah. to, and all of them evidently accepted it. Yeah. But now yeah. I have to look back to see what church. I would have to go back and research it. But I read a story this mm -hmm. week where one of the states, not ours, thank God. Yeah, that doesn't mean it won't happen, but right. has made it a felony to use pronouns in a way mm -hmm. that um, that might be in yeah. a way that somebody could view as um, what is it bullying right. so I mean if you make a mistake and call they them mm -hmm. he or she okay but if you continuously refer to them as she and they like they them mm -hmm. and it's seen as harassment yeah, then right. you can be charged with a that's felony well, okay know. let's let's take a different format yeah, because Okay, what I want to encourage you to do is these people are calling God they. Yes. And, and you know what I would encourage you to do? If, if you know a person, call God they, because that way you can start a conversation about God. Yes. You, uh -huh. we got to be careful about, we, we need to be outraged about it, no doubt. But we got to now look right. into our ways that we can seek to get people to the Lord. Right. I'll call God they all day if they won't come to Jesus, like you said, yes. come to Jesus. And this was a, so that, that's the deal. It was, it was, a, um, it was a, um, I think it was probably more on the Catholic side because right. he is a, well, he was on right. TV and he's one of their advisors now that I'm thinking right. about. And they only have like a bishop right. or somebody that comes in. It could so, be Anglican. Well, Anglican. Yes, it, it could very well. Okay. But Which is well, the, against what, it. what I'm saying too is that it's true that God is not a male or female mm -hmm. that says that he's spirit. Right. So, you know, that's where I can call God they technically, but we, he has always taken the masculine. He has. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously being a father and he's never said exactly. he's a mother exactly. or anything. Exactly. Now, this side, now, on the other part, he does say I'm like a mother hen taking children into his wing. We've got to give that. I'm, I'm not justifying, but what I'm saying yeah, is, is, that, no, is that it's we scary. need to go part of when we go to um, apologetics, if we went to an apologetics yeah. route, we got to find common ground. We're never going to minister mm -hmm. to anybody if we're kind of staying in our mm -hmm. solid corners here. Not going against scripture, but we got to use languages that people, you know, we use other languages to talk to people. we got to use that kind of language. Arguing okay. doesn't 
yeah. doesn't achieve what you want. Correct. Thank you, it, thank you for making me feel better. For yeah. That. It, I was really upset, and that little bit of time would make me feel better. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's right. The thing is, you got to stand. The, 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 the consistency is mm -hmm. the gospel. Right. Because somebody is going, if you're, if you have a way in a common ground, as it were, arguments of common ground, and then you can go in, and, mm -hmm. and then you can have a conversation, which will, with your intention, you have, you'd have an ulterior motive to lead them to Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they'll listen. Okay. Uh, if they're not listening, then what, do you, what have you got? All you have is, two, like you say, banging mm -hmm. heads. And the so. bottom line is, whether we're witnessing to somebody who's LBGTQ, right. or an alcoholic, yeah. an addict, or somebody who's living in the world and living a, a, a poor, sinful lifestyle, mm -hmm. their biggest problem is not right. what we see as, you know, their biggest problem is they need Jesus. That's right. right. And then so Jesus and the Holy Spirit can transform right. them into his image. And, and, and this is the point. When, when we come here, we want the, to, when we're called come up here, like we're reading in the verses, we want those people to come up with us. Mm -hmm. We can be Amen. called the same way. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's here. I want to also note here that, um, so we have, you're in the spirit immediately. So a snatching away. You've got John is taken away quickly. In the okay. blinking of an eye. And... Um, <laughs> Behold, where does he go to in heaven? Does he go? He goes to heaven, but particularly a place it says. By the throne. By the throne. throne. Okay. Yes. We want to really kind of emphasize the throne, right? And who? And and it's another type of throne. It's not just any throne. Hey, it's a throne. What kind of throne is it? Jasper. Is it rainbow? Well, I mean, it, it's it, the one who said it's, it's an emerald. Emerald. It's an emerald. Emerald which means rainbow. Royalty. Okay. Yeah. But. We we'll want to go in as it's the throne of God, is it not? Yeah. Okay. So it's the throne of God. We'll go into next week, um, and th is the plan to go in and talk about the throne more so. Yeah. Um, but the idea is that the, it's the throne of God, and it's emerald means royalty and um, things of that nature. So that's why it's sparkling and things that way. But it's the throne of God. So as a believer, when you die or you're raptured, you're going to the throne of God. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because, and this is anybody after the resurrection of Jesus, right? Jesus opened the access to the throne of God when we die. Okay? All right. Now, um, so the throne of God is where we are, and that uh, is in heaven. Okay? And really, you could say the throne of God is heaven, right? Because where would we rather be? I'm, I'm not going to go off to this corner of heaven by myself. I'm going to go to the throne, right? It's like, mm -hmm. I'm, but there's a guy, uh, Charles Billingsley from Liberty. Remember, he said, uh, you know, I get up to heaven, I'm not going to be looking for Mark or Moses. I'll be like, where's my Jesus? You know, so that's, yeah. that's, that's what I'm looking for, right? I, he's the one who died for me, as the song goes. So. You know what's but interesting? Mm -hmm. It's a fun fact. Is yeah. that the throne of God, the house of God, the heaven, yeah. does not have an address. That's right. So it's, it's, it's like it's wherever there. Jesus is, right. they're there. Yeah. You know? So it's mm -hmm. kind of, I learned that one of the study that the throne of God is, it's not in yeah. one set place. Yeah, that Ezekiel talks about it's in, the uh, throne of God has wheels. Wheel and a and wheel. It yeah. can wheel and wheel, so that means it can turn without, it can it can go another direction without actually turning. It's actually can move in any other direction. Mm -hmm. So it goes where the spirit leads. So this spirit here is leading up into heaven. You know, most of the people mm -hmm. that I hear when they talk about going to heaven, is they're searching for family. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to the throne of Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, they can't wait to see family. That's right. I, so, I think it's the heart of being human. Well, I'm searching for, I'm searching for my mom's side. I, I just think it's Sheila's ready to see her boys again. Yes. Now, yeah, now for clarity, we, we, what it is is that Jesus you'll see first, and he's going to take you to those boys. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we, we, you know how we roll here, because God is outside time. So technically, you and the boys are going to arrive at the same time. So that's the truth. Yes, so. Can. That's the thing is that we're we're all linear. They call it. We're all on timelines and schedules Jesus and things like that. God is going to have everybody arrive at the same time. Because if you notice, John didn't arrive at a different time. He arrived at the one time. So that's if he represents the church. The church is going to arrive at the one time. So the, the logic there. You see. So you you'll go in and be like, okay, okay. Um, there's Jesus. Wow. Okay, what about my grandma? Or, you know, think about, <laughs> oh, they're right there. Right? Hey, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Jesus. Right. But we're going to see what, everything. Was that, um, uh, I can only imagine, remember the song? Oh, you yes. Can yes. Yes. Remember yeah. that? So, yes. So, so, we're, so we get to be in heaven. So what we're going to do now is go into something, why the rapture or what the rapture is to be, um, what do they call it, uh, supposed to be like. And basically the bottom line is the rapture is the culmination of a Jewish wedding. Okay? So we talk about weddings, you are going to get married once the rapture comes, okay? So... I have an, I'll, I'll send you some more notes with scripture and everything, so we're just going to go over the sequence just for, for time's sake. I've tried to do the whole scripture deal, and then we go look at each one, and guess we have, it could be 5 o'clock by the time we're looking at it. So you have your own time to go look at that, and I'll send you all the scripture and everything. Okay. Um, so first part of the Jewish wedding, and this is, you know, we're not to the rapture yet, but this is kind of like we, we need a parallel to our Christian life. Okay. So we have what's called the betrothal. Let's see if I can do this right. Where's my eraser? Oh, no. Do you want a marker? Uh, no, I got an eraser. Uh, paper. Oh, no, I got it here. I got him. All right. I got an actual eraser. Because these, these hard words like betrothal are going to go like stump me. <laughs> you know? So, betro. Okay. When you think of betrothal, what do you think that means? Preparation of engagement. Like an engagement, right? Like you guys are, for lack of a better term, betrothed, right? It, it doesn't It's also mean that. a contract between families. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, yeah, that's right. what I mean. In a, in a Jewish wedding, you're basically chosen, sometimes before you're born, mm -hmm. um, to be married to somebody, okay? This is what was, if you go, go back to your Christmas time stories with Mary and Joseph. Joseph, the, the scripture says he wanted, he wanted to divorce her because of what happened with Jesus. She was pregnant. So the betrothal, you were, you were, there was a price paid for the bride at whatever time. I think it had maybe before born or, or, or just after or at certain points. I, I don't know the exact point. But there was a price paid for the bride from the, father, the, the husband's family or the bridegroom. Okay, So they, the bridegroom would pay a price for the bride. Uh, just say that, that they're young. And from that point on, she was destined to be married to him. And that's a betrothal. So that's a long engagement. Remember the, the movies called The Long Engagement, things like that. Mm -hmm. That's a really long engagement, mm -hmm. especially. But it won't be so long because they probably got married younger, 15 to 20, you know, would be the time frame that they would do. The, the husband would be older typically. Doesn't necessarily mean that. But the idea was they would go in and they would betroth one another um, through the parents, like you said. And then they would go and just wait to that. So Mary and Joseph were at that stage when we see that she was pregnant with Jesus, kind of put some color in there a little bit, right? Because they weren't married, but they were kind of engaged. And it's still a big deal if Mary, if you were engaged today and Mary is pregnant, it's still got a question, hey, where'd you get that? And baby? you know you didn't know it. You know you didn't know it. Yes, it would. <laughs> some, of the, some of the arguments for abortion are they would have married, they would have aborted Jesus in some of these contexts today. So, That's you know, true. because he was uh, a local vending store now. Yeah, I just saw in the pharmacist, by the way, that there's two things then morning after pill and all. Yeah, put money in it. And yeah, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So after pill. the key with the betrothal, though, which is uh, you're married yet you're not married. You haven't consummated the marriage, right? Um, is that there was a price paid? Okay. What is the price paid? Now, going back to the Christian life, price paid. What we're going back. What is the price paid for us? His death. His death. His death. Okay. And his resurrection. So you kind of see, first of all, the similarities here. Mm -hmm. The Jewish wedding. You. So right now, you are betrothed to Christ. You're not in heaven, like we're saying. We're going to go up there. You're betrothed to Christ. So, meaning we're all ready to be married to Christ, or we're going to be preparing to get married, okay? So what happens then after the betrothal is the bride is set apart, okay? And basically, um, what does set apart mean? Anybody remember the wording for set? What does set apart exactly mean? Well, it can be the word holy, but I don't know if it that's is. It is. It's kind of cleansing, preparation. Mm -hmm. 
Sanctified, sanctified is another one. Uh, yeah. We talk about in our Christian lives, sanctification, you know what that means mm -hmm. and things like that. So the bride is set apart. So the price is paid, which is Jesus, what he did for us. The bride is set apart. So now he set us apart from all, from the world, right? He set yeah. us apart. We're, we're distinguished <laughs> from Whoops. Um, the rest of the world because we're now going to be the bride of Christ, okay? All right. Then, but and this is obvious too, is Jesus here physically with us? No. no. He's spiritually with us, obviously, yes. through the Holy Spirit as a deposit, all that. But thus, when back when Jesus left, he had but he was betrothed to the disciples and whoever's alive then, and we're still in that kind of uh, you know category. Uh, whereas the bride, so everybody. Bottom line is everybody since Jesus resurrected, that's accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, is part of the church and is. The bride, we are the bride of Christ. Is the other place to go, okay? So the bridegroom, who is who? Who's the bridegroom? Jesus. Jesus, okay. He departs. So, because we know Jesus down here physically with us, did he ascend into heaven? Mm -hmm. Okay. What is what is he going into heaven for? Prepare. Prepare. Okay. Prepare. Right. And in the Jewish wedding, so you get the betrothal. Everybody after that ceremony would go home. And what happened, basically, was the bridegroom, I mean, he would be young maybe at the time, but when he was old enough or could help, he, they would prepare an addition to the father's house for the bride to eventually come. Remember mm -hmm. what Jesus said he's going to prepare a place for us? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what he's doing. So the bride, the bridegroom departs to the father's house, right? So it's not anybody else's house. Not, nowadays, we go to our own houses, maybe, right? Mm -hmm. we, we buy a house or something. But every, a kind of generations kind of stayed within there because there was that support and there was just, you kind of did that. But the Father's house, he, he prepares an, uh, an addition. Okay? So he's preparing that. That's what he's doing. Now, to put this in perspective, how long did it take God to create the universe? Six days Six and day. seven, he's on the seventh year of his Okay. How long is he preparing our house at this point? Approximately two thousand years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah. What? So if he can do a universe that we can definitely say is beautiful now. He got two thousand years to do all that. He's he's preparing a lot. Preparing a lot. Preparing. And you can imagine imagine a meticulous bridegroom going in there and just kind of making you know almost thinking um, you know somebody you know, preparing just everything, kind of tidying up, you know, all this kind of stuff. And that's what he's doing for us. He's really making it perfect for us. And he, and we should be perfect because he set us aside to be holy. So he's already made us like we're already married. And that's thus what we call the Christian life. And and even with the set apart, we can even add, because of the deposit, he could do the Holy Spirit, right? So that's what we he gave us. So we set apart with the Holy Spirit. We could also say that's how we're set apart, right? All right. So what does the bride do? Okay, we get, it shows what the bride does. What does the bride do? Anybody know? Prepares for the imminent return. Imminent return. All right. Imminent. Now, what does imminent mean? Any day now. Any day yeah. now. Immediately. It could happen it could be in an anytime. hour, in five minutes. And, you know, that, that's, I mean, it could be, it's all, we, all we're waiting for, for the rapture is exactly what John heard, the trumpet. Okay. Door of heaven open. That's all. It could happen, like I say, in a few minutes. It could happen, you know, um, 20 years from now. I, the, people, don't take anybody who's putting dates on something because there's no other sign. All signs have been fulfilled for the rapture to come. Okay? Because if we see the Antichrist, then you got problems because you're not supposed to see it as a believer. So that's another issue itself. So anyway, but um, so <laughs> you start seeing that. But because uh, God, the Thessalonians says we're going to be taken out of that and we're, we're spared the wrath. So that's like John is he spared that wrath. So anyway, so the bride uh, prepares, prepares for, for imminent return of the bridegroom. So the, in the Jewish wedding, the bride would prepare herself all those years, and what she would do is she would, would adorn herself in white arraignment and things of that nature. And what we find is that, and we'll find scripture, we'll get to some scripture specifics, maybe just three that are key here, um, is that the, the, typically what does a bride wear? Let me ask that question. 
Why Since we, Queen Victoria's death, she was the only one who was there. Yeah. yeah. So it was. it was white. That's what does white mean? Purity. 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 So that bride is you. You're supposed to be a virgin of purity. Okay. So that's what expect. Again, to the Mary point, that's what Joseph was expecting, right? He was expecting a virgin, right? And 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 it even says in scripture he didn't know her until after Jesus was born. So that's almost commitment with this side too, by the way, um, for Joseph. But the idea is that this. So she wears white. What is the white that she wears? How do we get? Good clothes to wear white. Oh, you told us that other day. Is it a linen? Yeah, it's linen. We get white. Is it the righteousness that yeah. Jesus gives us? The righteousness. We'll get. We'll, we get that righteousness, but he we adore. Us. What's it? He gives. Us. He gives us righteousness, but we can build on that righteousness, right? Mm -hmm. Because what we do is we work for Christ. We adorn ourselves. So imagine. Okay, so you get a white. You get a white um, linen dress, right? Is that all you wear? So you wear a white linen dress. Is that all the bride wears? She wear makeup. She don't wear jewelry. She wears all this stuff. She puts it on. So those type of things is the implication or the acts of the saints. So when you go, what they call is the acts of the saints, and what that means is what you're doing for Christ right now. So as you're ministering to people, as you're doing things, you're going in and you're actually saying that um, I'm I'm here. I've got this white raiment, so I'm fine. You know, you can stop where where you are and not work for. Do any work for the Lord at all. But Ephesians 2 10 tells you that you're there for a purpose. And what this yes. purpose is, is for you to adorn yourself with jewels and crowns. We know we get crowns in heaven, right? And all this kind of stuff. So the, the bride is is adorned for the husband for the husband to come. Okay. So that's what she's doing. She's preparing herself. And what that preparation involves, the bottom line, is our work for Christ here on earth. Okay. And that is going to translate to adornment mm -hmm. when our bridegroom comes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's how. We, we can just wear the white robe. That's fine. He, he still accepts us. But he says, hey, I'm giving you some space to go put perfume on, looking all good. You know, all that. People say it all <laughs> and just <laughs> like, <laughs> And just like a young woman prepares yes. to see exactly. her fiancé or her husband, yeah. we take joy in that process. Yes. yes. And, so. and so when we're doing good works... We're not doing them to gain the white robe. We're right. excited to do them because we're doing it for the love of our life, who is exactly. Jesus Christ. Well, but we still don't know when he's coming. So he can come in. So we got to prepare, as, get, get on mm -hmm. as much as we can. So right. he's, he's given us that kind of freedom to do that. So, mm -hmm. But the bottom line is that we don't know when he's coming. So going back to the Jewish wedding itself, the bridegroom would come with a processional. Yeah. And he, they, they, and all of a sudden, knock on the door, and say, "Hey, it's time to go." So we would have what we call a surprise gather. So it wouldn't just be the, the groom would lead it, right? But there'd be other people behind them, you know. And, and they would knock on the door, and they'd be bearing gifts, and just it would be a whole thing. I mean, I guess the parents would know. Obviously, the father knows. And taking it back to the Christian side of it, because the father does know when it's time. But the father's going to tell the son, it's ran by the father, by the way, the father tells the son it's time to go, go get your bride, okay? So that's, but it's a surprise gathering, okay? So what, So the bride is preparing, but she's waiting at the door, she's waiting, and then all of a sudden she hears a knock at the door. If she goes and starts doing something else, she's going to miss it, isn't she? Mm -hmm. Not that we'll miss it, but... We're to be looking at that door just kind of, almost like, I mean, this is a bad. Anticipating. Yeah. Wanting to come. I'm just thinking, it's a bad analogy, but your dog coming out. You know what I mean? And so you're, if you have a dog and the dog loves you, your dog is at the door waiting. You know? So, I mean, if the dog doesn't, you know, we've seen Secret Life of Pets, you know, that, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just sitting here. I'm going to wait for Ginger to come home. And she just sits at the door. And that's what literally we're supposed to be doing we're be sitting at the door be excited everything else is just whatever i'm waiting for that door to open so that's the surprise gathering okay so and it's called and this is part of that is the start of the wedding itself okay and that is this surprise gathering what do you think it translates to the rapture the rapture okay because it's a surprise so surprise snatching away it, this rapture of Harpazo is what, and again, we see kind of through this here, this prophecy is patterned. We see the rapture here, and then we'll get to the throne of God because it's going to snatch us away. 
So that is what the surprise gathering is. And that's, thus starts the wedding. Now, let me ask you a question. How long is a wedding, typically, today? Less than 30 minutes. Yeah, less than 30 minutes. No more than an hour. Yeah, yeah, no more than, you better not. There's people going to their people watches. don't want to even come. Yeah. 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 It, now, if you, the count, church, it? if you count the reception and if you have a dinner, it could go longer. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. And they do include all that yeah. in there. Yeah, well, they do. They do. Um, I remember just going back to the church thing. There was a guest preacher one time, and the guy said, well, how long do I have to preach? He said, well, you got as long as you want, but we leave at 12. So <laughs> you know, that was kind of a cool. I like that comment. So, but the idea is that um, we think weddings could be long even if we don't want to be at them. We're obligated to be there. But it was a seven-day wedding. Okay. Wow. How would you like a seven-day wedding? So you have to think about it, too. You're, you're putting people in for the night, a family. You're like, it, you got it. And it's, it's, there's things to do every day, every day. And, and according to the tradition. So it's a seven-day wedding. Okay. Now, I want you to go back. Let's go back to what is actually going to happen. Seven-day wedding kind of translates into some of our end-time stuff. And the what? What's seven days? What would that be? Seven bulls and seven lampstands. Oh, yeah. We're getting there. Yeah, oh, because there's a lot of sevens at that structure. Would it kind of like be, would it be like on a year, in seven days instead of seven days, it's seven years? Seven, yeah. Which exactly. would be the tribulation. Seven. See that? The seven year tribulation. Okay? Now, we're not be going through tribulation, but the idea is what we'll be doing. What we have at a wedding party, wedding feast, they call it. And, and you'll have some people, this is actually called something called the marriage. Supper of the Lamb, because the Lamb is the bridegroom, and the Lamb is Jesus, obviously. Okay. Now, here's the confusion a lot of people put. Okay. Um, we, first of all, I guess the sequence would be: you go up to heaven. We'll, we'll gather those adornments that we just mentioned where, uh, over works. We kind of have rewards and everything. You know, we get crowns. We'll do that first when we get up there. Okay, but we'll have to start this seven day event. And some people argue, oh, the marriage supper of lambs is the beginning. Oh, it's at the end of the tribute in heaven. But it's the entire seven years. You get it? So it, there's no, it, if you're there at that point during the seven day or seven year, you're, you're, you're in the marriage supper. So that, that's, that's the point. A lot of people argue, when, again, when that's placed, but no, it's the entire time you're there. Mm -hmm. You get marriage supper, you get your adornments, you get. Um, this is weird, maybe a little crass, but it's truth what they did. Um, cause you were a virgin. Uh, you would go, I don't know what point during there, but you would go and consummate the marriage behind in a tent. And what would happen literally, they would actually bring the bloodied bed sheet and show everyone that you were a virgin. Mm -hmm. And that was part of the celebration. So fun there, right? It's like, you know, that not something we would do today, but it, it, but that's what, but it, it, it was really, and, and they would rejoice to the Father, again, giving the Father glory. That's what Jesus did, right? To go because he kept um, the, the daughter a virgin when they were married. So, and that's how Christ goes. And anything you've done in the past, remember, the righteousness is put on by Christ, right? Mm -hmm. So you are virginal. To Christ because he's forgiven all of your sins. You'll stay that way mm -hmm. because you believe in him. So uh, you, we're not talking about even today physical stuff. People have done a lot of things before they got married. <laughs> you know, who knows? But the idea is that when you're married to Christ, when you're in him, all your sins are forgiven. So that's the point. You're, you're not going to be in it to a place where, oh, God's not going to accept me because I'm not a virgin. Or uh, God's not going to accept me because... I did this or that. It's kind of the deal. It's God accepts you because you believe that he died for all of your sin. Right? So right. that's the idea. So you're always that virginal part of it. Okay. Now, in the seven-day supper. So um, that's basically what we have for that. So let me give you three verses that are good. Um, all verses are good, right? But Amen. <laughs> three verses that are good. Um, the Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. Let me go here up. I, think it's, I wasn't going to do that one, but um, I think it's good to do. All right. 
Don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were brought with a price. So glorify God with your body. So we were bought with a price. Um, we mentioned some parables last time. This correlates to the churches. Um, some people say that um, Jesus is the pearl of great price that was found in the field. But we believe here that we are the pearl because Jesus is the only one that gave all he had for us. You see, he's the only one that could. Have we given all we have for Jesus? No, we haven't. No. <laughs> we're trying to, right? But, but, right? but the idea we haven't. So that, that's the only one who could fill that is Jesus himself with the... Um, we are the pearl of great price. We were bought at a price. Okay. So, and the other one is, um, uh, let's see, is a, a known one. John 14, 2 to 3. So somebody read that. My father touches me, brings, if that, were, if that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to, take you to be with me, that you will also, so you also may be where I am. There you go. So we're going to be where he was in the throne room. So it, that's a hallmark first because we couldn't really build on anything else except what Jesus had already said, right? So he already said that, hey, he's coming back. So we wouldn't really have a super, I mean, we have other places to go. We do. But the idea, we want to take Jesus' words as what exactly what he said. And you can see how this correlates. Maybe the, this can kind of the two points here and the bride departs and the brick preparing the addition and uh, that he will come back. You know, so that's, that's kind of like the how. This is what he did. This is what um, uh, he's doing. And if we go to another cool verse um, in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians uh, 4, 16 to 17. I think it's more than that. Uh, so forgive me. We'll have to maybe. 4, 16 to 17. I think you can go extend that a little bit. Oh, four. I was looking at five. Whoops. Yeah, five is good, too. Yes, it is. has a lot to do. If you read those first, second Thessalonians, um, so here, here's the point of first and second Thessalonians, okay? It'd be like, oh, maybe some great, grand, and holy way Paul was writing the letter. It sure was, because mm -hmm. it's from God. But the idea, the Thessalonian people thought they missed the rapture. Okay, they thought, oh my goodness, I missed it, I was watching, did, did you come to the back door? No. So Paul had to write this for clarity to him, to, to them rather, and um, that you didn't miss the rapture. They were also worried about, oh my, what if we, our loved ones, what happens to them when, when we're raptured up? Did they miss it? Because they already died. So that's why we have Thessalonians. So I think, um, oh, might have to extend that, but let me, uh, meaning go around, add some more verses there, but let me make sure I can get, um, let's do, go up to, somebody read up to 13 through 17, that's what I meant to do, 13 through 17, or 13 through 17. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about these, those who sleep in death, so that, that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's will, we will tell you that we who, that we who are still alive are also left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. Keep going. Two more verses. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangels, and with the trumpet's call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, he who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Yeah, so it's a comfort for people, okay? And for clarity, it's true what they say. So once we're um, with the Lord at this point, we're never going to leave him, okay? There, there's no, we, we do come back with him. And I'll send you actually, I thought I might have time to do it, but I don't. 